Harriet Tubman, known in her childhood as Araminta Ross, was a black woman who was born into slavery sometime around 1820 in Dorchester County, Maryland, but escaped in 1849. She was a powerful abolitionist leader and starting in 1850 became a conductor on the Underground Railroad. Harriet Tubman was sent off to work at age six as a basket weaver. At age 11, after contracting measles, she was sent back to the plantation where she was born. A year later, Harriet would be inflicted with a permanent head injury after her master threw an iron weight at another slave who was suspected of trying to run away. This injury would affect her her whole life as she would unexpectedly fall asleep while working or in the middle of speaking. Harriet Tubman was continually beaten by her masters for supposedly slacking off during work. Continually hearing of the many successful escapes in the area where she lived, Harriet longed to be free. In 1844, Harriet Ross married John Tubman, taking his name. John was a free black man who was not supportive of Harriet's dream of escaping and living in the North. When she spoke to him about her plans, John threatened to tell her master. Harriet escaped anyway in 1849, leaving her husband behind. She traveled by night, making it by dawn to the first safe house on her route north. Harriet's neighbor, a white woman, gave her directions to that house. From then on, the people in each safe house gave directions to the next. In 1850, about a year after Harriet's escape, she became a conductor of the Underground Railroad and made a series of dangerous trips back to the South to free some of her relatives and friends. And once she found a way to navigate these different states in this area um, of the Northeast, she was able to um, bring others along. And that story, this idea that you not only help yourself, but then you can create opportunities for others. That's what real political activists do, right? They don't just, they're not just concerned about their own um, well-being. They're able to think beyond that and, and look at systems that are in place and say, what can I do to change that system for others? Obviously, sometimes when you, you commit acts of civil, civil disobedience or you break the law, uh, you're taking significant risks. And these people took big risks. Uh, um, they had a tremendous amount of courage, and that courage was translated into change, real positive change, which not only uh, transformed the country, uh, but made, made you know, a, a tremendous difference in people's lives, and most notably the, the African Americans who were set free as a result of, you know, their activities. Her story is one of many stories of people who were, you know, courageous enough to try to change systems that imp uh, oppressed people. And it's really important for us to know about all of the stories of individuals who understood deep down in their soul, in, in the core of their being, that it was wrong to, um, to treat people inhumanely as though they weren't human and would give their life. Um, to change that. Tubman made the trek south and back to the north ten more times, bringing close to 70 people to Canada to redeem their freedom. Harriet Tubman was affectionately called Black Moses by the press and by the people she helped free, for her strong Christian faith and for her role as a conductor in the Underground Railroad. Like Moses, who helped lead Jews to the promised land of Israel, she led black people to the north 
to freedom. It's people like Harriet Tubman that stood up against these really um, extreme odds of the possibility of death, knowing that she had this conviction and the support of her religious beliefs and God um, that made this difference. And I think even that, understanding that we're not, we're not in this alone. During the Civil War, Harriet Tubman was a part of the Union Army, serving as a nurse and a cook for the all-black 54th Massachusetts Regiment and as a spy for another all-black Union battalion. Harriet Tubman also helped many people who escaped from slavery to get jobs as cooks, nurses, and launderers during the Civil War. In 1863, Harriet Tubman led the Combahee River Raid with three gunboats carrying 300 black Union soldiers. The troops stormed a Confederate hideout and successfully freed 730 men, women, and children from bondage. Of the 730 people she helped free, 100 to 180 of them joined that regiment as new soldiers. Following the Civil War, Harriet settled into her new home in Fleming, New York, marrying her second husband, Nelson Davis, four years later. Harriet dedicated the remaining years of her life to the movement for women's suffrage. In addition to being an abolitionist, Harriet Tubman was a feminist. She fought for the right of all women to vote and attended suffragette meetings with Susan B. Anthony, another important feminist of the time. Harriet Tubman died at the age of about 98 years old in the year 1913. Th though it, the task was difficult, it paid incredible rewards. Um, and I think that's the legacy is that you know, sometimes doing the right thing is not always very easy and sometimes the reward takes a long time and a lot of hard effort before it pays off. That's somebody I want to be like. I, and, and you don't, if you don't know about the person or people like that, then how can you look up, up to them and admire them and um, learn from them so that you can build some of those skills in yourself? She was a slave, she was a, a, a black woman, she was a woman, um, and, and um, she suffered from epilepsy, and she still did uh, all the things that she did. That's a side of history we, we don't tell. Today there are many museums and monuments dedicated to her story and in her honor. In 2016, after much pressure and a national campaign, the U.S. Treasury Department approved a measure to replace the image of former President Jackson with Harriet Tubman's image on the $20 bill. This change was originally supposed to happen in 2020, commemorating the 100th anniversary of women gaining the right to vote, but has been postponed until 2026. People's sense of who they are and their value, their human value, would be diminished and people might believe that it's okay to um, be abusive, be oppressive, be um, inhumane to one another and the value of human life is so important. It's also important to remember that we are a society that was established with slavery at its base um, because that's a part of our history that we have not had an easy time overcoming and I think is um, right now uh, coming to the fore again in terms of how we haven't dealt with our past. If you look at the constant struggle, the long journey for human rights and human freedom and dignity, um, we're all just one part of that chain. Harriet Tubman was a part of that chain. And, um, and I know you heard the term, do we all stand on someone else's shoulders? So um, she just continued the work of, of uh, humankind in their quest to become free. Ping pong.